Earth's curvature is approximately 8 inches per mile, or 20 centimeters per kilometer. But how far can your eyes see? You can see the stars. They are far away. You see them as tiny dots while they are massive. Take a look at this picture. The train track gets smaller and smaller until you can't see it anymore. Luckily we have cameras these days that can see much better. The argument for all practical purposes came to an end when the Church of England was established by law during the 16th century. They rejected many laws of the ancient Catholic Church and to appear forward thinking they embraced many radical scientific notions prevalent at the time, including Copernicus' round earth theory. With this endorsement, the theory found its way into the schools, which were then largely controlled by the church. It has remained there to this day, and many children have accepted it without question. Perhaps the most significant experiments were those carried out on a canal known as the Old Bedford Level. Located in Cambridgeshire, England, the canal is perfectly straight over an uninterrupted six-mile stretch. While there, Parallax conducted many experiments, all towards one conclusion, to prove that the surface of the water in the canal was indeed perfectly flat. In one experiment, a boat carrying a flag rode from one bridge to another six miles away. An observer with a telescope placed eight inches above the surface of the water found that the flag and the boat were distinctly visible throughout the entire distance. If the Earth is a sphere with a circumference of 25,000 miles, then over a distance of six miles, the second bridge should mathematically be 16 feet below the observer's eye line.
There is no curvature whatsoever, but I'm going to tell you what the curvature should be, just to give you some idea. There's the lighthouse, we said it was about two and a half miles away. At two and a half miles away, the, it should drop off about 50 inches, but it's difficult to know because the lighthouse itself is actually set up on the land, but we can see all the land. And if we just pan to the left, this is the road, or what was left of the road that goes round. The road is just to the left there. So as we come back in there, you can see there uh, the one of the two forts. The other fort is there, but it's way back in the distance there. Now that fort, uh, we said, is about five miles away, if I'm correct. Now there should be a drop off there of 16 and a half feet. And for the fort in the distance, we can see all of that fort in the distance, that's about seven miles away. There should be a drop off there of 32 feet. Well, I don't see a drop off of 16 feet for the first fort, and I don't see a drop off double that for the second fort. I can see both of those buildings in their entirety. I know that because I know what they look like, I know what shape they are, and I know how much of the fort sticks above water. And you can see both of them. I don't see any curvature whatsoever. I can see the little light vessel that is situated between the two of them and I can see the land, the foreshore and the land in the distance. So as the camera swings round now we can see this red ship and the uh, water tower that is approximately eight miles away and we can also see the large storage units in front of the water tower yes eight miles away and I don't see any drop-off whatsoever. Eight miles, we, we should see a 42 and a half foot drop-off. I don't see it. There's the tower blocks in the distance, we can see those very clearly. Let's come round to the ship and the harbour at Immingham that is 13 miles away. Now folks, we should see a drop-off of 112 feet. So we shouldn't see those ships at all. We shouldn't see the derricks or the cranes at all. The land should drop off 112 feet. Do you see that? No. Why don't you see it? Because the earth is flat. I'm sorry, but we've been subject to a series of enormous hoaxes. And this is one of them. <laughs> 